Hi everyone, welcome to day seven of our non-chronological reports. Today we are going to be use, looking at the final chapter of our story and answering comprehension questions. We are also going to be writing our conclusion and assessing our writing. So please could you go and grab a few, all of these things that you need and I really would like to see your energy and concentration during this lesson um, and I would love to see lots more of you submitting your work and sending it in to me as well. So pause the video here while you go and grab those few things. Welcome to Terrific Tuesday. Today we are reading through the next chapter of our book and answering longer comprehension questions and as I said finishing off our writing. I want to end our unit with a quote from Winston Churchill. Never, never, never give up. Now this is a really simple quote. OK, everyone knows what this means. You've all been working super hard in this really challenging time, being away from school, being away from your friends. Um, but I've seen that so many of you are just persevering and keeping going. and You're not giving up. Um, you're still doing your online learning, still trying to stay um, on top of your work. And I think it's brilliant. So keep working hard and um, hopefully we will all be back together in school very soon. OK, so today is Tuesday, the 2nd of June. We are going to be using our retrieval skills to answer questions. So we are first going to read Chapter 7 of A Bridge on Fire and complete the multiple choice questions. So if you could please go ahead and do that first on Purple Mash, please make sure you've submitted that work to me so I can see how you're getting on and pause the video here and um, I will go on to the open ended questions in a minute. OK, so here are our open ended questions. Remember, you need to answer these in full sentences to so look back on the text to get some uh, clues to the answers and please use evidence from the text where necessary. So number one, how did Kat manage to dodge the first bullet from Jean Paul's gun? Number two, why was Kat so angry with Jean Paul? Number three, at that second, the German soldiers appeared and were stunned to see a British Dakota in the middle of the field. Why do you think the German soldiers were so surprised to see a British plane in the middle of the field? Number four, for the rest of the flight home, Kat answered a series of Ota's detailed questions about her time on the ground. He made copious notes and by the time this process had finished, the plane was touching down at a military airbase. Why do you think Ota needed to know every single detail about Kat's time on the ground? And lastly, what do you think went through Kat's mind as she sat down next to Winston Churchill? So I want you to answer those questions. Pause the video here and please submit your work to me at the year six email address. We will go through the answers shortly. OK, so here are our answers. So number one. Um, Kat managed to dodge the bullet by throwing herself rightwards and rolled over the ground. Number two, why was Kat so angry? Because he had lied to her and he was actually working with the enemy. So although she had lied to him, he was also she was also angry with him because he had lied to her. OK, number three, at that second, the German soldiers appeared and were stunned to see a British Dakota in the middle of the field. So why were they surprised to see a plane? Because they didn't even hear it land in the field. So they were probably really surprised that there was a, a plane. And how did they miss it? How did they not see it land? OK, so um, that's why they were probably quite shocked. Number four, um, why did Ota need to know every single detail? Well, he had to because he was in charge of the mission and he had to report back. And any information um, that Kat had would help him for his plans for the next attack or the plans that they had in place to win um, against um, the Germans. So it was really important that he had as much information as possible. And number five, um, what do you went, think went through Kat's mind? So this is about what you think, but I think she might have been completely shocked and in disbelief and probably felt a bit of pride, too, that she was able to be part of such an important mission and that um, the prime minister of the UK actually wanted to speak to her. OK, pause the video here and correct your work, please. Um, you can send the work to the year six email address. I will love to see it. Hmm. OK, so um, today we are going to be assessing a piece of writing. So that is your LI. So for our final lesson, we are going to be finishing off our writing of our non chronological reports and then assessing our work. 
So I'm going to go through the conclusion of the report with you. And remember, the conclusion is important as it is a summary of the information that you have sent or created in the report. OK, and on the next slide, I'm going to show you my example and then we can assess our writing as well. So please pause and write the LI and the date in your book before moving on. OK, so here is an example of a conclusion that I have written. It is clear that World War II was one of the most horrific and devastating events to take place on our planet. Not only did millions of people lose their lives, there was, still, there was also a huge shift in the relationships between other countries. The soldiers who gave their life for us are remembered every year during Remembrance Sunday, and their stories of bravery will live on forever. The impact of the Nazis' evil treatment of the Jewish community is still felt today, and every year we have Holocaust Memorial Day, which reminds us of the sacrifice the Jewish people had to make and, tor and the torture they endured. So again, my uh, paragraph is actually shorter than um, I would expect from you guys. But if you see, I've added a lot more present day information in there to kind of make it more relevant to today's society and how World War Two is still um, very much at the forefront of people's minds and how people would not want to see a repeat of that again ever. So please um, add some more summary of your report in there and then try and relate it to uh, the more present day. So you can uh, pause the video here. You can use my. Um, conclusion to give you an idea but please do not copy everything but I'm happy for you to copy the information about Remembrance Sunday and um, Holocaust Memorial Day if you want to add that into your conclusion that is absolutely fine okay so take your time with it there is no rush okay so now we have done that it is your chance to look at your writing and assess it so this was our success criteria that we discussed yesterday I'm not going to go through it step by step because we talked about it yesterday. However, you need to make sure that you have included these things in your writing. So what I would suggest is to go through your writing and maybe underline or highlight some examples of these things in your writing. So, for example, have you included bold print text boxes, underline headings and subheadings? Have you used formal language? Have you used modal verbs? Have you used a range of conjunctions in your writing? OK, so just you don't have to pick out every single one. But even if you pick out three or four examples for each thing, um, that will be brilliant. If you can annotate it with the success criteria. So why have you underlined it? Or why have you highlighted it? This shows my conjunctions. This shows my nouns, that type of thing. Then that would be perfect as well. Um, please do not. Um, worry if you haven't used everything in your writing remember we, when we're writing we're always drafting and making things better so please don't worry about that so first thing i want you to do is go through this success criteria go through your writing and just check it to see that you've done that and highlight some examples so pause the video here while you do that okay now as you are doing your success criteria and as you've highlighted, you will see that there may be some things that you haven't included in your writing. So now is your time with a different colour pen or pencil to go through your writing and see if you can correct it and add in any amendments you would like to make. OK, and I would like to see your edited work. I don't care if it's messy. I don't care if I can't read all of it properly, but it'll be really nice to see edited work in our last unit um, when I received the writing um, with the newspaper report, which was edited. It actually looked really good because I could see that you were really trying to improve your work. So I'm really, really pleased with that. Um, I really want to see your work. Like I said, um, well, in tomorrow's lesson, because we finished our unit this week or today, um, in tomorrow's lesson, we are actually starting a new book and the book is Skellig. And um, this book has actually been requested by secondary schools because they want to see how you're writing. So the work is going to be sent to them um, to kind of have on file. So you are going to have to do a really, really good job with it. We're going to work on it together over two weeks. Um, but I do want to see some amazing work from you. So um, be prepared to start a new unit tomorrow. OK, so for today, 
Um, please do this work, edit it, improve it, and then please send it to me so I can see how you're getting on. Okay, I will see you tomorrow.